My name is Ken Cox. I am a postdoc here at the Biomems Resource Center, affiliated with Massachusetts General Hospital. Uh, my main research project involves isolating neutrophils using an immuno affinity capture device with microfluidic structures. We use this device uh, at five different hospitals across the country uh, to isolate RNA for downstream genomic uh, analysis. Basically what you have is a master of SU8 photoresist on top of silicon. We're going to pour uh, a two-part elastomer, uh, PDMS, on top of that uh, master and that PDMS will form a mold. We remove the master mold from its case and place it into a petri dish. Uh, the master is secured by tape on the bottom of a petri dish. On the scale, we weigh out a mixture of, of PDMS hardener and uh, base resin. Uh, the ratio is uh, one part hardener to ten parts resin. Typically for our devices that have been cut out, we weigh out 20 to 30 grams of the resin and 2 to 3 grams respectively of the hardener. After pouring both the hardener and the resin into the small weigh boat, we use a standard plastic fork to mix the two together. You want to make sure that you mix vigorously and fold the mixture on top of one another to ensure that the hardener is evenly distributed within uh, the resin. Typically, we monitor how well uh, the two have been mixed by looking at uh, the number of air bubbles. We try to get an even distribution of small air bubbles throughout the elastomer. We then pour the PDMS on top of the SU8 master that's in the Petri dish. We place the master with the PDMS on top of it in a vacuum bell jar and evacuate the chamber to degas the air that we've mixed into it. Typically the degassing process takes 30 minutes to one hour. Following degassing we remove the devices from the vacuum chamber and place them in an in a oven at 65 to 80 degrees C. Minimum cure time at the, these temperatures is three to six hours. In our lab we typically leave the devices in the oven overnight. Typically we use a number 11 uh, surgical steel uh, knife. We make straight cuts down about uh, half a centimeter from the edge of the silicon master. And we cut around the edge of the master making a large disc. We peel the PDMS mold from the master and we place the feature side up in a clean petri dish. We take the liberated mold out of the petri dish and we place it onto a cutting surface using either, either a knife or uh, a knife mounted onto a linear rail. We section uh, the devices that are contained on the mold. Each section device is then placed back into the Petri dish for uh, further processing. Typically, to interface our devices with uh, fluids, we will punch holes into uh, the PDMS device. The device that we use to punch holes is a standard 3 mil syringe. At the tip of the 3 mil syringe, is a blunt tip stainless steel needle. Within the stainless steel needle is a wire that fits the inner diameter of the needle. That wire is attached to the plunger of the syringe. By pulling back on the plunger and retracting that needle, uh, you can punch a hole uh, or punch a plug into the PDMS, flip the PDMS device, and eject it by pushing on the plunger. The secret to punching devices 
is to keep the plunger as vertical as possible and not to rotate uh, the punching device at all. When you punch through the PDMS, you lift the whole device, the whole PDMS device up with a pair of tweezers, flip it over, and eject the plug with the, by pressing down on the plunger. You grab the plug with a pair of tweezers and uh, dispose of it. Then you retract the plunger again, flip the device back down, and pull out the cutting device. You repeat this until you have all of your holes punched. So for the bonding process, we bond our PDMS devices to glass slides. For our devices, we're going to non-reversibly bond or, or covalently attach the PDMS to glass slides. The way this is accomplished is by placing them into a uh, placing them into a plasma asher and exposing them to a reactive oxygen plasma. So the steps in doing this are to take the PDMS device and place it onto the uh, tray of the plasma asher with the device features facing upwards. You can use any standard uh, glass microscope slide. We use a slightly enlarged one and a half inch microscope slide fit our device. You can use them straight out of the package. We prefer to treat them in a piranha solution. This cleans off any organic contaminants that might be on the surface of the glass slide. After you place the device and the glass slide on top of the tray for the plasma asher, you slide the tray into the plasma asher uh, and expose it to a, the reactive oxygen plasma. Following completion of the program uh, of the plasma asher, we open the chamber and we remove the plate with our devices to the bench top. Using tweezers, we carefully lift up the PDMS device, being careful not to touch the bonding surfaces with our fingers. We flip the bonding side over onto the glass, onto the glass slide. And then we make sure that, we've, that there are no air bubbles between uh, the PDMS and the glass slide. We place the PDMS uh, device, now bonded to the glass, on a, on a hot plate for, at 65 to 75 degrees C for 10 minutes to achieve a better chemical bond. So this part, in, in this section, we are going to chemically modify the surfaces of the PDMS and the glass. Following bonding in the clean room, we're left with a surface, a PDMS surface, that has reactive silanol groups on, on the surface. Uh, we need, this reactive surface is hydrophilic and will eventually diffuse away into the bulk of the PDMS, so surface chemistry is best accomplished immediately following plasma treatment. We're going to use a 5% solution of a mercaptosilane. It's a 3-mercaptopropyl trimethoxysilane. It's a 5% solution by volume. And basically what we do is we inject it into the inlet and make sure that you completely fill the device without any air bubbles. If any air bubbles are present, you push them out with tweezers. This, once the, you've injected the silane, you let it sit for uh, 15 to 30 minutes at room temperature. You, typically, we inject a second volume of the silane uh, 10 minutes into the reaction. So after the silane has reacted for approximately a half hour, we'll take a, we'll flush all the devices with three to four device volumes of pure ethanol.
the excess that we eject will just wipe up with a chem wipe. Following rinsing of the devices, we pick up the devices and place them onto a hot plate, which is set to 100 degrees C. And we basically will allow the ethanol uh, that's in there to evaporate. This helps anneal uh, the silane surface. Um, once the device is dried, it can be stored in a desiccator for months, uh, or it can, uh, you can take the device and immediately proceed to the next step. After the devices have cured, they've cured with a, uh, now a silane coating on both the glass and the PDMS surface. The silane is a, a mercaptosilane uh, with a thiol group which will react with our hetero uh, bifunctional crosslinker, with, which is GMBS. Uh, it's diluted in uh, pure ethanol. It's water reactive, so you need to take care not to uh, expose it to aqueous conditions. We inject it into the devices and we remove any air bubbles uh, with tweezers, as I'm doing here, to make sure all the surfaces are wetted with this molecule. We cover it and we let it react for a half hour. After the GMBS has reacted for a half an hour, uh, we're going to flush the devices with deionized water to remove any traces of ethanol that are in the device. And then we're going to flow through uh, neutravidin, which is a, a biotin binding protein. The neutravidin has been pre-diluted to a concentration of 10 micrograms per mil. Uh, if, if any air is accidentally injected into the device, the device will need to be reflushed with ethanol to uh, effectively remove all the air. Ethanol wets the uh, device surfaces better and allows you to remove any air bubbles that were accidentally uh, introduced into the device. And once the devices have been flushed with deionized water, we'll typically fill the device with two to four um, device volumes of the diluted neutravidin solution. The neutravidin will react with the GMBS, which is immobilized to the surface through any primary amines uh, on the neutravidin. Uh, this process can occur at room temperature for one hour. Typically, I place the devices in the cold room at 4 degrees C overnight. Before we add the antibody, however, we want to flush out any, uh, any avidin which is unbound uh, in, in solution. And we do that by flowing through 1% uh, solution uh, BSA uh, diluted in PBS. Because these chips are going to be used for downstream genomic analysis, all solutions that we use uh, are RNA free. Typically what we do is we will flush the device with four to five volumes of the 1% BSA solution. And then following that, we add our antibody. The antibody for this experiment is CD66B, uh, an antibody specific to granulocytes in whole blood. We use a concentration of anywhere from 10 to 25 micrograms per mil, and we'll inject the antibody. We'll inject 200 microliters of antibody into each device. We'll do two injections of 100 microliters, one into each uh, port of the device. Typically we'll inject 100 microliters into one port and we'll wait 30 minutes and inject an additional 100 microliters into the opposite port.